Today is uh, November the 1st, 2019. It's a little bit after 4 p.m. and the temperature outside is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> so I'm going to run a test train. This is a Southern Pacific Daylight train with uh, nine total cars. <clears throat> and I'm going to test the, the uh, RPO car and the, uh, the baggage car that have had uh, mitigated uh, uh, truck washers to basically, at least on the um, early version, that uh, car uh, uh, had mitigation washers to keep the uh, truck level, which was a problem. And uh, this is written up in my uh, vignette that Greg Elnassian hosts. It's uh, called the, th the, three, the heavy, heavy, Rister Heavyweight Three Axle Truck Vignette. So this is a test to see in this case, how the Rio Grande car performs, which is the early version car, and we'll see how it how it works. And the train has all all the car engines, and the cars have KD center set couplers. In the case of the locomotives, like this Southern Pacific E9 here, it has a KD 907 fitted in a Datum Precision a CNC machined coupler box. Uh, so that the coupler is center set, no offsets, <clears throat> and so the, the A units here can be run back to back and doesn't matter as to how they're able to uh, pull the train. So the boxes are being metal, of course, are quite strong. And in the case of the cars, they're all KD906 uh, type uh, coupler boxes on them, and again center set. <clears throat> so I'll begin to run the train. We'll run it outside to see how it performs when when these RPO cars were on a 41 car freight train right behind the engines. Of course they're behind the engines on the passenger train here too. Uh, it was a torture test for them and they did string line in one place. So, so again the truck, this is the uh, Rio Grande RPO car I'm testing first, the early version and the trucks have been mitigated by adding uh, washers between the, uh, the, the car bolsters, <coughs> the, the pivot bolster, and the, uh, the, the, the swinging slot bolster. So I'll run the train outside now. And here's the late passenger car, the late aristocrat passenger car. It has a, uh, a rib that bears the load of the car, and that was a difference from the first versions. So here it is coming across the bridge. And again, this is the early version car. And the weight bearing on that car was offset toward, not in the center of the truck, but offset toward one end by adding a washer that uh, more or less equalized the load. And on the, the late baggage car, there's a rib in the center that it was an aristocrat uh, modification to bear the load right in the center of the car. <clears throat> so we'll run the train up the grade, see how this early version RPO car performs and the late version baggage car with the uh, mitigation washers. And the washers were only added to the late version just to, <coughs> just to uh, keep, keep the truck from possibly interfering with the uh, chassis bosses if the car were to, to transcend over a crest or go, go into a dip. So it was a, more of a precaution. There's the observation car. The train is a mix of Aristocraft, the two heavyweights on the front, and it has three USA Trains uh, um, streamliner cars with the fluted sides, which are appropriate for the daylight. <laughs> and it also has Aristocraft daylight smooth side cars, which were used on the Shasta daylight. Uh, of course, as time went on, they were could have been put anywhere. <laughs> So 
So the two heavyweight cars there, the plastic heavyweights, which I added a pound of weight to, they weigh six pounds. The uh, streamliner car, the Aristo streamliners, weigh six pounds about. And the uh, USA Trains heavyweight cars are really, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, streamliner cars, the fluted sides here, they weigh 10 pounds <coughs> in that area. So I'm 50% power now. The Aristocraft three-axle truck locomotives like the E9 here, it's, uh, they run slower, they're geared lower, <clears throat> so they typically run slower than USA Trains products or even the Aristocraft, uh, uh, the ones with the um, GE type, uh, or I'm sorry, the Alco type versions that they made, like the RS3 and the FA ones and FB ones, <clears throat> U25Bs. So it looks like it got up over the grade here without any problems. So now it's going to approach the critical area where the uh, RPO car streamlined around this Christmas tree. It fell over. So we'll see what happens now. Looks like I made it with flying colors, <coughs> so to speak. <coughs> So we'll catch the train going down grade here. Oops, I'm gonna have to throw the switch up here because the train will derail otherwise. The switch here. here. Now we'll go up through the outside path. And I have to throw this switch, the train my R7 here. And we'll get a good view of the RPO car. So it went around perfectly well. <laughs> coming over the viaduct. Now this is the test with the same train uh, that had the RPO, um, uh, Denver Rio Grande RPO car on it. 
it had the early model <coughs> and it uh, went around the outdoor layout without any problems. It didn't string line or show signs of tipping over. So now I'm going to test the Southern Pacific, the late version, the Aristocraft late production version um, RPO car. And it has a different design, a newer design truck arrangement, as I mentioned before. And I'll start to run the train now so we can see it go by and ultimately go outside. And as you notice, the Aristocrat E units have a simulated Mars light on the top light that kind of turns on and off to make it look like a Mars light, a, a stacked LED headlight. <coughs> <clears throat> that is uh, these Aristocraft E9s. I'm not sure if I misspoke and said USA trains, but these are Aristocraft uh, E9s. <laughs> now here is the... Here is... I'll slow the train down and stop it. <clears throat> here is the late version uh, Aristocraft uh, RPO car. And uh, the main difference is how they redesigned the, the, the truck bolster and these, I call it the sliding slot bolster. It, it, that mounts to the chassis. And there's a rib right here in the center and the plate that's it's a bigger plate that the rib now pivots against and the car weight is right in the center now as opposed to being on on the offset pivot. Now this this design still has the offset pivot here and it has still has the swinging slot pivot further back uh, but the swinging slot pivot is not quite in the center, so now they designed it, or had designed it, because Aristocrat's been long going out of business now. <clears throat> so they had designed it with this rib here. That uh, so, so all the weight is in the center of the truck now, rather than bearing down on one end, which formerly kind of pushed the, the side frame down <clears throat> at an angle. <clears throat> so that resolved that issue. <clears throat> and so they also added tabs to the to limit the excursion of the, of the journal box here on both ends and I'm not quite sure that what that was supposed to accomplish but I think that the idea was now the truck would rock up and down fore and aft on the on the fulcrum here rather than relying on the end axle suspension going up and down like the uh, previous uh, early version and first version cars had. So that's the primary difference. And so we'll run the train outside now. <laughs> we'll see how this car performs. So I'll speed it up here to 50% power, which is how I ran the last train when it had the Rio Grande RPO car on it.
So now the train's on the, the upper part of the loop. And we'll see how, how the car performs cresting this grade here. We're in the big, long, heavy freight train. And the car showed rocking sound signs. <coughs> Both version cars did. And this one, this, on this train, which is much lighter, even though the passenger cars are heavier than freight cars, but nine total, the weight of nine total freight cars is much less than, than 41 uh, or, or, or nine total passenger cars, much less than the weight of 41 freight cars. <laughs> so that torture test with the RPOs was probably unrealistic on that long, heavy freight train. <laughs> So we'll see what it does when it comes around this tree here where the we're on the freight train, the RPOs both versions tipped over. And it showed no signs of having any problem at all. Now the train is going to head up along the back fence. And we'll see how the RPO car comes around this tree here. And no signs of leaning over or anything like that. <laughs> And there you have it, a nine-car daylight passenger train, test train.